Hi, I'm Stacey and I'm with Maria and she's going to show us the microelectricity kit. Maria, can you tell us what the microelectricity kit is? Yeah, uh, as you can see here, I have all the components uh, displayed. They are arranged in groups. In the first group here, we have all the devices that we can connect in our electricity kits. And as you can see, they are ordinary devices that we can find in any, in any electricity circuit. Uh, here we have various items that we can use for magnetism and electromagnetism experiments, all of them, from uh, ion filings to bar magnets to magnadura magnets and so on. Here we have the items that we use for the connections, and these perhaps are unique to the kit, especially the springs and the strips that we are going to talk later on. And here we have the um, batteries that uh, we supply our circuits. So Maria, how do we take all these individual components and mm. actually connect them? Yeah, as you can see, there, there are not many connecting wires here because they are not really necessary. But what we need is those springs. The springs can, can fit exactly in these little wells, in the microwell plate. And then when you bend the spring, once the spring is inside the well, it's easy to bend it with your finger. And once it's bent, you can insert here the various terminals from, from components. For example, here we have a bulb, it's already in its bulb holder. You bend the spring and you see how easy it is to slide in the bulb. Um, we can also slide the other a strip of uh, metallic strip, for example, maybe. We need it at some circuit. Similarly, we can connect any of these other components. Let me show you something. With to connect a component, it's better, most, for most of these components, the best connection is to put two springs mm -hmm. uh, so that you leave two holes apart to make it easier for your fingers to manipulate the component. For example, here we have the bulb. We bend the one spring first and then the, the second, and the bulb is well connected. This is a very good connection. If we want to connect next to the bulb something else in series, again, we insert a spring two holes apart again, say now we want to connect a resistor. Here is a resistor. The resistor, you can bend it silly, there is no problem. So you can insert it, you bend the spring, insert the one lead, bend the other spring, insert, insert the other lead. So we have now those two devices connected in series. Uh, similarly, say that we want to connect a, an LED. The LED, because it's not a good advice to bend the leads of the LED. However, how do I connect it? I put two springs next to one another, and I stand the LED upright, and uh, it, uh, the connection is quite good. Now, to make it a circuit, we need the battery. Uh, as you can see, the battery has two wires. Connect one wire to one spring and the other wire to the other. Again, we we'll connect and it can to be this. in any space, right? Any yes, any space. space. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello. And this is the simplest circuit. Now, say that we want to include the switch there. How can we make a switch? Let's remove one of the wires, like the black one, for example. To make a switch, I'm going to connect another spring at any hole, at, uh, some proper distance away, we can connect the battery to the third spring that I have on my plate. Now here, in the, uh, in the space between the two springs, I can uh, connect a switch. For a switch, I'm going to use two paper clips. The one paper clip, you insert it in one spring, the other to the, uh, the other spring. Now, now the paper clips do not touch, the, sw the switch is open. If you close the two paper clips, you close the switch, and there you have like a single switch, one idea for a switch. So this is how we could make a switch. Stacy, um, I want you now to try and connect another two bulbs in series, one at a time, though, okay. to check the brightness. Yeah.
Ya. Yeah. It's like going dinner, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Connect the third one now and see this again. Disconnect your battery first. Maria, is it possible to connect these bulbs in parallel using this kit? Yes, yes. Let's do it actually, because this is a little bit more complex. So I will disconnect everything to start from the beginning, okay? Okay, let's say that we want to connect three bulbs in parallel now. So let's assume that I'm going to connect my three bulbs in parallel in this direction. The best thing is, is to start with the springs. Mm -hmm. Connect again springs at, uh, remember, two holes in between all of them. In uh, where I'm going to connect the bulbs. So you see here, here and here I'm going to connect the three bulbs mm -hmm. to be in parallel. Now I need a connection along those springs. So for this, the best and the easier option is to use two copper strips. And after I have put the springs in place, I just connect all the springs together with a copper, like that. Okay? okay. And the, the same thing on the other side. And... Uh, So this is the, the hardest part, to insert the copper strips, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they stick out. Now I can connect my bulbs the normal way that we did before. So we can connect one there. The second one. And, and the third one. And of course, uh, here or the other side, I can connect my battery again. And remember in these circuits, if you want to place a switch as well, you just add an extra spring and you connect your two paper clips there. But for the time being, there is no need for the switch. And we have our three bulbs in parallel. Mm -hmm. If you want to disconnect one of the bulbs to see what happens to the others, there's no need to, to remove the bulb, com uh, the bulb completely. You just unscrew one bulb and it, it is as good as being out of the circuit to see the brightness of the other bulbs. Is there any way to measure the circuit? To take measurements? Yes, yes, of course. And for that reason, we usually use the multimeter because it can be used as an A meter or a volt meter or even an ohm meter. So it's three in one. But, let, I'll show you how to measure, but before, before that, let me show you how to connect the two leads of the multimeter. The black lead must go to the hole in this multimeter, to the bottom hole, which shows the sign to, of the earth, ground, ground. The red one, the red lead, in most of the cases, has to be inserted in the socket which is uh, labeled volts, ohms, and milliampères. In this case, it is the middle socket. So these two sockets are the ones that we are going to use in all of our measurements, except in one case. And this exception is if you use this range for current that is marked 10 ampere, only if you use this range, it is the only time where this red lead has to go to the top socket, which is marked 10 ampere DC. This is the only time. Unfortunately, you must not forget to do this change because if you forget, all your readings will be wrong. So in this case, Let's leave it in the middle socket, which is the most common socket. Now, 
let's say that we want to measure the potential difference across the bulbs, okay, across the connection. Say we're, we want to connect a voltmeter in this position across the two springs. Okay, this will be a voltmeter now. This is the ranges, the ranges for the voltmeter. We are going to use the range marked 20, which means it measures up to 20 volts, because our batteries are 3 volts, so this is the best range. Anything above would be too large, anything below would be too little. So I need to connect my, my two probes to the two springs. I need to tell you that this, if you connect them like that, this is not a good connection because it's not stable and the, your reading fluctuates. The best way to connect them is to bend the springs again and connect the probes in the spring to make a good steady connection. Like that. You see now, it shows minus 1,91 here. This, this is volt, minus 9,1 volt. The minus is because I have connected my red and the black opposite to the way the, the, the battery is connected. You see the red is here mm -hmm. and the black is here and I have connected them in the other way around. The good thing is when we use a multimeter, it doesn't matter if you make the mistake to connect the, cable, the, the probes the other way around, you just see a minus, it means that the red should be there and the black should be there. But the meter is not in any danger, the, the reading will be still the same, just the minus. If we want to measure total current, we need to break our circuit, our circuit here to insert our A meter somewhere in this position or in the, to the other side of the battery. So we need another spring. All right. Let's connect our battery now. So you see, we made an opening. So here at the opening is where we are going to connect our A meter to measure the total current. So remember the probes must be inserted in the springs if you need to have a good reading, stable reading. Now this is an A meter now. The A meter range is all this, um, these four ranges that we see here from 200 microampere to 200 milliampere. Usually, the, the range that we are going to use will be the 200 milliamperes. If, if this is too small, we can use the next one. Let's see. Yeah. You see this one here? It shows one on the left. Mm -hmm. This means it's a message that the meter tells me that I am out of range. In other words, the current here is larger, larger than 200 milliampere, which means I have to go up one range. And the next range to go is the 10 ampere. Okay. But now that I'm using this range, 10 ampere, I have to remember to remove this red lead from the middle hole and insert it to the hole, the correct hole, which is marked with 10 ampere. And, and I get a reading now that says 0 0,50, 0 0,49. This is ampere now. 0 0,49 ampere. 